1207, graphing trig functions. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to graph all the basic trig functions. Like always, let's start off, since we're going to graph, let's talk about what the sign looks like. Let's start off by making a table. All right, so once we know the basic one, then we can apply all the basic rules to it and graph a graph any way we want. But let's see what a basic one looks like. So I'm going to put theta here and y here. Let's make a little chart, a little xy chart. So we have this. Now, normally I go 0, 1, 2, 3, but actually we do a little different in this one. Let's start with 0. So I can figure out what sine of 0 is. And actually the best way to find out what sine of 0 is is do a little unit circle. 1, 0. Let's go pi over 2. Generally graph trig functions in radians. That's kind of the industry standard. That's why radians are so important. So at 0, remember sine e, sine is a y value, so sine is 0. So 0, sine is 0. Now I could do any one of them I want, but I'm going to go to the next big one right here, pi over 2. And the sine of pi over 2 signs the y value, 0, 1. So at pi over 2, say that's pi over 2, I should be at 1. And then the next big one is right here, pi. So at pi, that is negative 1, 0. Signs the y value, signs 0 again. And then we go to 3 pi over 2, that's the next big one, right here. 0, negative 1, signs of y value, so negative 1. So 3 pi over 2, negative 1. And then if we go 2 pi, so go all the way back around to where we started. Well, the sine of 2 pi is 0, it's like the first one. We go back to 0. And if you keep on going, it's going to be the same thing, right? Because after that, we go up to here, over back to 1, then back back down to 0. This is a periodic function, just like the last lesson we talked about. So sine and cosine graph are the periodic functions. And they go on forever. So that's what a sine graph looks like. Like a straight up basic sine graph. I could do the exact same thing for cosine. Let me show you a basic cosine graph. And then we'll talk about these graphs in general. I'm not going to do the table, but I'll do the same idea. So let's say this is 1, negative 1. Let's go. Let's use the same values. Pi over 2, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and all the way to 2 pi. So x is not y. Right, so if we did if we did cosine right here, cosine of 0. What am I starting to look over here? Cosine is zero. Remember, cosine is the x value, so cosine starts at one. Now, if we did cosine of pi over two, which is the one right here, cosine is the x value, so cosine is zero. Then let's move on to pi. Cosine is the x value, so cosine is negative one. And then we move on to three pi over two. Cosine is the x value, so now it's back to zero. And then we move on to back to where we started, which is one again. This is what a basic cosine graph looks like. And like this like as always, it will just repeat itself over and over again. You get that. So that's a basic sine graph, a basic cosine graph. If you notice, these are actually the same graph just moved over. Like if you look at let's say we started right here. That graph right there is the same graph as a basic sine graph. It's just moved over a bit. So they're actually kind of the same graph. Sine starts at the origin, starts at 0, and cosine starts at 1. Now let's break this down a little bit more. So if we look at this, see how long it takes to repeat itself? We talked about this last lesson. That's called a period. Now here's a new thing. The long, How long it takes to get from the middle, so this is like the middle right here. See how it kind of oscillates around that? To the highest point or the lowest point, call that the amplitude. Right, so the amplitude of this thing is 1. And the period, how long it takes to repeat itself, is 2 pi. So that's the amplitude, that's the period. That amplitude tells you how, how high and how low you go. Period tells you how long it takes to repeat itself. So that's a general idea. Now how do you how do you notice it? How do you figure out what amplitude and period are? Well, let me erase this because I need some room. Sorry if you can't do this on your paper. Well, a basic sine cosine graph looks like this. So y equals a 
cosine bx. That's the same way for sine. And if you want to know what the amplitude is, it's just the number in front. So that's the amp. So in this case, you notice the number in front was 1. So we just only went up to 1 down to 1. Same thing with this cosine. The number in front was 1. So we went up to 1 and down to 1. The way you find the period is a little, little more interesting. It's another formula. It's 2 pi over b. Where b is this number right there. So like in this case right here, it would be 2 pi over... There's no number right there, so 1. So just 2 pi. If you notice, our period was 2 pi. So that's the basic formula of how to find stuff for sine and cosine. You need to know how high it goes, how low it goes, call the amplitude, how long it takes to repeat itself, which is a period. And once you get those two things, you just kind of graph it. Sine graph starts at the starts at the beginning, and it's the same spot, halfway in between. Half between these two is my highest. Half between these two is my lowest. It's connected. Cosine is different. It starts on top. And to the same spot, halfway between the lowest, in between is where you cross. That's the general idea. So now let's do some examples. So all they want me to do here is to find the amp in the period. So my amp here is the number front, 3, done. The period's a little more work. It's 2 pi over b. That's your b. So it's 2 pi over 5. And that's pretty much it. That's the period, that's the amp. Over here, amp is the number front. There's no number front in this case, so it's just one. The period, 2 pi over b, I meant to do this last time. I didn't write the formula. There it goes. B is the number right here. So you get 2 pi over 1 half. And I can't leave it like that. We're not scared of this anymore. Just the same thing as a divide sign. So it's 2 pi times the reciprocal. So it's 4 pi. And then one over here, the amp, again, just the number in front, so 3, period, is 2 pi over b. In this case, there is no b, so it's 1. So my period is 2 pi. Amp 2 is kind of like a vertical stretch, right? It works the same way. So if it's if it's a bigger number, you go higher. If it's a smaller number, you go lower. And just like a vertical stretch is. That's why it's the number in front. So that's how you find the amp and period. Now, when we graph these things, that's the first thing we want to find. So let's do some graphing. Now, again, if I'm going to graph this, the first thing I want to find is the amp in the period. That says amp. My amp is 2, the number in front. Period is 2 pi over b. There's no b, so it's just 2 pi over 1 or 2 pi. So we're going to graph this now. It's actually a lot easier if I give you a grid. So a lot of times I'm going to give you a grid. But let's, cause it's, let's just go pi over 2, pi. 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Again, this is a normal xy grid. It looks a little funky because we're going only to that far. But it's the same grid as always. We can go negative 1, negative 2 if we want. Pi is like 3.14, so that would be like 3 right here. But most of the time we just use this. So like that. Now I'm doing sine. Remember, sine, a basic sine graph. So start at the middle. My period is 2 pi, so that's where I should end. Start the middle, and at 2 pi, and that's your period. It takes you that long to finish. Sine has a halfway mark right here. And then halfway between these two is my highest point, which in this case is my amplitude of 2. And then halfway between these two is my lowest point, which in this case would be negative 2. And that's the idea. Disconnect them. Again, these go on forever. I can't really draw because it's me and I can't draw. That's the idea. Let's look at another, another couple of them. This one right here, right? Same idea. Let's find the amp. One half. Let's find the period. 2 pi over b. In this case, I should do have a b. It's 2. So 2 pi over 2. So pi. So I'm going to try to draw the same graph. I'm going to try to draw it the exact same way. Besides the fact that I can't draw. So it's pi over 2. Pi. 3 pi over 2. 2 pi. Let's make this 1, then 2. Negative 1, negative 2. Now, this is another sine graph, so we should know how, hopefully we know how the way it starts now. We start at the origin. Sine starts with 0. I'm going to end at pi this time. That's my period. So right there. Halfway in between will be pi over 2. 
Half of me used to use my highest, which in this case is only one half, so it's actually like right here. Half of me used to my lowest, so it's another negative one half. So my graph looks like this. Something like that. Again, I can draw. But that's what I did. Notice how it's shorter because the period's shorter, and it goes, doesn't go as high because the amp is smaller. Now, in this case, there's only one rotation. Remember, this goes on forever. If I really want to, I could do it again. So another period would be pi plus pi would be 2 pi. Halfway would be right here. In between these two would be my highest, which would be 1 half. In between these my lowest, and negative 1 half. Now I can draw another period. And I can keep on going. Right? Because it's a periodic function. It just keeps on repeating itself. Both ways. I go backwards also. So let's keep that in mind. Right? It doesn't just stop there. It goes on forever. Sine and cosine graphs do that. Now let's move on to cosine graph. Same idea. Amp is 1 because there's no number up front. Period is 2 pi over b. Now my b in this case is 1 half. So 2 pi over 1 half. Which we did earlier is the same thing as saying 2 pi divided by 1 half. Which is the same thing as saying 2 pi times reciprocal. So that is 4 pi. So I'm just a little different because I don't want to write forever. Hey, that was a pretty straight line. Um, I, I, don't, I didn't expect much. So this is pi. Whew, let's just do that. Let's just go by pi's now. So that's pi. So hopefully around here is 2 pi. I'm trying to eyeball it. It's like right here is 3 pi. I got to keep on going so I get to 4 pi. So let's keep on going. I'm trying to eyeball this. So let's say that's 4 pi. Remember, pi is like 3.14. So this is like almost 12 out. If I was like a normal number chart, it would be around 12. Amp is 1. So I guess this is normal. It's like 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Okay, let's graph a cosine graph. Remember, cosine is a little different. Cosine starts on the top. So cosine will start up here. And you always end the same spot. Halfway in between is my lowest. In between is my red crosses. So if I was doing this one, I'm going to start at 1 because that's my amp. At the end of my period, that's how long it takes me to finish. It's going to be 4 pi. So that's where I'm going to end. Halfway in between, which would be about 2 pi, would be my lowest, which in this case is negative 1. Then halfway between these two, which should be about pi, is right across. Halfway between these two is right across. And that is my cosine graph. She looks kind of like a U. My graph sucks. But she looks something like that. Oh, that's awful. Don't forget, it goes on forever if I really want to. I keep on going and go all the way to 8 pi. Or I could go back to negative 4 pi. But that's the general idea. Let's do one more basic graph and then we'll move on to how to graph tan. So in this case, again, amp, so number front, so 3, period, is 2 pi over b, which in this case is 1. So just 2 pi. Now, I don't want to go as far as I did last time because there's only 2 pi, but here's 0, here's pi. Here is 3 pi over 2. There's 2 pi. I can keep on going if I want, but eh. My amp is 3, so make sure we go up to 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Again, we're doing a cosine graph. Cosine starts on top. Since I start there, i got to end the same spot where my period is. So I'm ending right there. Halfway in between is my lowest, which in this case, halfway between those two is pi. Halfway, halfway of 2 pi is 1 pi. And then in between these two is right across. In between these two is right across. And that is my graph. Right? Again, if I was going to go on again, I'll just do another period. Since this is 2 pi, it'll be another 2 pi, which would be about 4 pi. And I keep on going. But that's a basic cosine graph, right? So cosine graph starts on top, ends on top, halfway is the lowest. A sine graph starts in the middle, ends in the middle, halfway is where you cross. So those are basically those. Now let's go on to tan. So we're going to skip that because eh. So this is what a tan graph looks like. It's a little different. If you remember tan, when we do tan, it's undefined at the, the, the y-axis at 90 and negative 90 or pi over 2, negative pi over 2. So it has these things there. Now here's the thing. I'm never going to ask you to graph tan. You might, you might have to do an honors math analysis, but in my class in IB, you don't actually graph tan. So I want you to know how to graph with the calculator though. So let me show you how to do that. So here's my calculator. Uh, do you see right now? There it goes. So there's the calculator. So let's turn it on. Now here's the thing about graphing trig functions. We we always graph them in radian mode. So make sure you're in radian mode. I was not. That would have been embarrassing. So then we go to y equals. Let's delete so I don't need anymore. So tan of 2 pi. So let's go tan 2. Now we don't have a data. Well, actually we do have a data button, but it's not on right now. So we're just going to use the x value. 
It's like that. If we hit graph, you can see this. Now my window's a little off, but if you look at it, it does look like a tan graph right there. So that's what a tan graph does. It goes, starts down there, goes up, and it constantly repeats itself. I can do anything for one half tan, but eh. Let's talk about, so that's how you do a basic tan graph, a basic sine, basic cosine. So we're going to finish off talking about the other inverse trig functions, specifically cosecant, secant, and cotan. So here's the graphs of cosecant, secant, and cotan. Now they're actually not as bad as they look. Cosecant is opposite of sine. If you look right here at the dotted line, ignore the parameters for now. Look at the dotted line. That's a sine graph. So to graph a cosecant graph, all you do is draw a sine graph. Then at the x-intercept, you add asymptotes. And then at the maximums, you add parabolas. You want a secant graph, right? Secant is opposite of cosine. You're going to see a cosine graph. And just like, this, just like we do over here, we're going to add asymptotes at the, x, at the x-intercepts. And we'll add parabolas at the minimax graphs. Now, cotan is just a, it's kind of like the inverse. It's, it goes moves the opposite way of a tan graph. There's a little bit more, there's a little bit more to that, but that's the general idea. And again, cotan graph I'll only asked on the calculator. So let's graph a cosecant graph. So first thing I'm going to talk about, cosecant is the opposite of grand, sine, reciprocal sine. So sine 2 theta is what we're really going to look at. So let's find the amp and period like we always do. Amp is in the front, which is 1. Period is 2 pi over b. In this case, my b is 2, number front of the theta. I get 2 pi. Now let's draw a line. We'll go pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, yada yada. Amp is 1, 2, 1, 2. Like that. Now the first thing we're going to do, since we're going to graph cosecant, let's graph sine, but we'll make it dotted. Right, so sine starts at the origin. End of the period, which is 2 pi here, so we're going to end right here. Halfway between would be pi over 2. High side goes 1. Low side goes negative 1. So we're gonna, let's connect these dots. So we'll do a little dot line. And again, if we want, we can keep on going. We can even go backwards if I want. Now to make this cosecant graph, we have to add two things. We have to like pimp it out. First thing we're going to do, at the x-intercepts, we're going to add vertical asymptotes. And then the final touch at the min max points around parabolas. Now don't get sloppy with this. You don't want to go past the vertical asymptotes. You cannot pass them. Something like that. Right, so it can't go past the vertical asymptotes. But there is my cosecant graph. It's just a sine graph with a makeover. And that's the general idea. Let's do one more. Or a couple more. Ooh, first thing, we already did a we already just cosecant graph. Let's make that a secant graph for prosperity. So that's secant. 3 tan again. I'm only asking you to do this in the calculator. Actually, one thing I do want to talk about though. Period we know is period 2 pi over b. That only works for sine and cosine and secant and cosecant. Tan, the period is actually pi over b. If we look at the graph of tan, the period that only goes, well, it doesn't show you here, but it's pi. It only goes pi across. It doesn't do the whole thing. So, Period for tan and cotan is pi over b. So my period here is going to be pi over 1 because no b, so just pi. And if I want to graph that, I'll just have you do it in a calculator. You know, something looks like something to this effect. Same thing for cotan. If I'm on my period, it's just like a period right there. So pi over b. In this case, it'll be pi over 2. And you get that. If I was in graph it, now cotan is a little different, but I'll have you do your calculator. It would be something to this effect. Those are very crude drawings of what I wanted to do. Anyway, let's finish this off with two secant. So again, secant, the way you graph that, you just want to graph its reciprocal function, which in this case is 2 cosine. So I'll find the amp, which is 2, the number in front. Find the period, 2 pi over b. There's no b, so just 2 pi. And then if I'm going to draw it, 
Right, so I gotta go all the way to two pi. So here it says this is pi. It's two pi. Halfway, halfway. I my app is two, so make sure we go up to two, at the very least. And if we're gonna graph this, we want to graph. I'm trying to graph two, so you get this graph two cosine. Let's do a dotted. Now cosine starts on top, so it starts at the amplitude. Starts right there. Ends at the same spot. Halfway's the lowest. In between these two is where you cross. And that's my cosine graph. Now I want to make it a secant graph, so we got to add some things to it. First, we're going to add some asymptotes at the x-intercepts. And then we'll add parabolas at the min-max points. So we'll add a parabola here. We'll add a parabola here. There you go. That's how you graph secant and cosecant and sine and cosine.